Hello everyone, welcome once again to one of our holiday traditions, the Atlanta Sports Awards presented by the Atlanta Sports Council. For the next hour, we are going to take you through another memorable year in sports and honor the very best and brightest on the local scene. We will also take a trip down memory lane as we revisit the top sports moments of 2023. Top Sports Moments, sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. Who can forget about the year Ronald Acuna Jr. had? The National League MVP, and of course, it was unanimous. The first ever 40-70 season, a big reason, of course, the Braves won yet another division title. And yes, we will talk much more about the Braves in this very show. The Atlanta Sports Awards is about looking back to a great year here in the A, but it's also about looking forward. And the Atlanta Sports Council is primed for some very big years ahead, 2024, 2025, 2026. We could go on and on and on. I sat down with Dan Corso to talk about all of the big events coming to our great city in the near future. It's our purpose at the Atlanta Sports Council to drive economic benefit to this community. And we do that by recruiting and hosting sporting events. And we go after the biggest sporting events in the world. And we certainly cannot do that alone. We've got great partners throughout the state and the city and the region. Uh, and we all work together really hard because this is a competitive business. You know, sure. these big sporting events um, are, are very beneficial to cities and communities that host them, both economically and socially and, and just from a tourism standpoint. And so cities all over America would like to host them. If you look back in 2018, we hosted the college football uh, playoff national championship followed by a Super Bowl in 19 and then we had the men's final four scheduled in 2020 that didn't happen because of COVID of course but back to back to back three oh. great events now we're looking at the same type of setup here in just a few more years in the middle of this decade with the college football playoff championship coming back to Atlanta the World Cup and the MLB all-star game all wrapped together it's just going to be a great part of this decade and kudos to you guys because Atlanta is a phenomenal city to host these events, but it's because of you guys that they are able to happen. You mentioned the College Football National Championship. Atlanta, the first repeat city, which I think is so incredible. It's coming back in 2025. What can you say about what we can expect from that game? Well, I love that you're saying that because that is the biggest talking point for us as a city and as a community is that we are the first city in America to host what is arguably one of the top sporting events in the country. College football is clearly passionate around uh, around the country and certainly here in the southeast. So for Atlanta to be named the, the first repeat city is a great honor. Uh, having it in 2025, uh, January 20th, Monday, MLK Day. So that'll be a nice special thematic to it. And um, working closely with the CFP, we're almost on the clock now, about a, about a year away. Uh, and we're excited about it. And so we're looking at identifying ways. How do we do it a little bit differently in 2025 than what we did in 2018? There's going to be a lot of surprises around the corner, I bet, that people can look forward to. Yes, right? yeah, hopefully. I mean, it was great in 18. Sure. But certainly we want to look and see how do we do it a little bit differently in 25. Another thing that's great is the MLB All-Star Game is coming back. That was announced not too long ago. Yeah. I know that fans here in Atlanta are incredibly excited to see it come back. How did that process shake out, the fact that it was coming back to the city of Atlanta? Well, look at it. It's, it's our third time Atlanta hosting uh, that event uh, yeah. 1972 being the first and then again you know in 2000 uh, and now of course 25 years later in, in 2025 credit to the Atlanta Braves their relationship with the Major League Baseball to be able to get that event back to Atlanta we're excited to work with them if you look at the footprint of what the battery is in Truist Park it's just the perfect setup for that type of event where you've got the game on Tuesday night and then you've got home run derby on Monday and all the other activities and the fan events taking place on the weekend and prior leading into that Tuesday All-Star game all confined there in the battery and you've been to the battery we've all been to the battery it's just a, an incredible place to go even when there's not a baseball game sure. going on so add the, add the fact that you've got you know the biggest event that Major League Baseball has to offer uh, in that setup it's going to be fantastic let's dip into soccer or football for a yeah. little bit because yeah. there's a lot that has to do with soccer in our city the Premier League tons of success for that we've got the FIFA World Cup coming we will talk about that but Copa America is yeah. coming next year right what yeah. can we expect? So if you like soccer, uh, Atlanta is the right place to be, right? You've got <laughs> yeah, Atlanta right United uh, and what they do. You've got Mercedes-Benz Stadium, which is the top venue for soccer and all sporting events, really. Uh, and what the, what they were able to do with the English Premier League Summer Series earlier this year and the success that the stadium had 
allowed us to work with them to go out and get COPA, as you said. So COPA America in 2024, uh, believe it or not, it's actually the oldest soccer tournament in the world. Started cool. back in 1916. It's been held every four years since. And so we're looking forward to, to uh, June 20th of 2024, where we'll host the opening match of the Copa America. And it's basically a mini wor World Cup uh, for, for uh, North and South America. So uh, whether it's Argentina, the US, Mexico, Brazil, we hope to have a real premier team come through our market. Incredible. And the fans are rabid for yeah. soccer. So it's really, really cool. And if you are really excited about soccer, when you hear 2026, your ears perk up a little yes. bit because everybody yeah. knows that the biggest thing in soccer is coming right here, the FIFA World Cup. We're under a thousand days away. Uh. Sounds like a long time, but I know to you, you're yeah. using every day to your advantage. How are those plans for Yeah, we are. We're in that planning phase now. Uh, this event will be unlike anything we've ever seen, uh, not only in Atlanta, but in the U.S. You know, one of the interesting things about our hosting is that we are also an Olympic city, right? Mm -hmm. So hosting the Olympics back in 1996, 30 years later, you've got the FIFA World Cup, arguably two of the biggest, the two biggest sporting events in the, in the world coming through Atlanta. We're the only city other, other than LA that's been able to host both of those events. So we're really excited about it. There'll be over a hundred matches. And when they announce the tournament schedule here in the, in the coming months, we hope to get anywhere from seven to nine matches. So we're really, really excited about this. Anytime I talk to someone about Atlanta, they say FIFA World Cup in right. 2026. Yeah. So they understand yeah. the magnitude of what's coming here. All right, one final question for you. There's a lot of success behind what you guys to obviously but what is the recipe for that success when it comes to recruiting all of these events on a global scale yeah it's a, a really good question we've got a nice list of, of assets that we're able to provide so when we're in the recruiting process of trying to get these events to name Atlanta as their destination we come up with things like great venues which we have yeah. surrounded by um, 96,000 hotel rooms in, uh, in the entire region uh, an airport that gets everybody here or from around the world quickly and efficiently uh, with great media partners great corporate Corporations, great public and private partnerships. The state, the city gets involved, and we really just have everything. Um, but when you put it all downtown in our campus, where the stadium is surrounded by you know uh, 15,000 hotel rooms, all within walkable distance, it becomes very user friendly. And so as a fan or as a media rep coming in, you know that you're going to be able to come down and have an efficient, um, fan-friendly, very easy experience. And I think that goes a long way when we're out there trying to get these events to, to name Atlanta as their destination. Here on the Atlanta Sports Awards, we celebrate all levels of achievement, pro, high school, and especially college. What a great year for our college athletes. It seems as though we are getting more and more stars every single year. Here's a look. Outstanding college athletes. Back to back, twice as nice, take your pick. UGA won its second straight college football playoff in January. And we was just playing for more than ourselves. We was playing for the G. Blitzing TCU and building a win streak that would eventually become a school record run in the fall. There will not be a three-peat, but the dogs are still poised to be one of the upper echelon teams for some time. March Madness hits Kennesaw. In 2023, the Owls men's basketball team made a memorable run to the NCAA tournament, winning the Atlantic Sun Conference and putting a scare into Xavier once the big dance started. KSU led the first round matchup by double digits in the second half before losing by only five. Can they do it again in 24? New coach Antoine Petway sure hopes so, but... Don't expect anyone to sleep on these owls anytime soon. Ruling the pool, the Emory men's swim and dive team captured its second straight Division III national championship and even got a trip to the White House. The Eagles won their third national title in the sport and set two D3 records in individual events while doing so. A great year for UGA individual athletes Ethan Quinn won the NCAA men's singles title in tennis, the fifth time a Georgia player has won the singles title. He was an All-American in both singles and doubles. And Kyle Garland, a name to watch for the 2024 Olympics in Paris, he set the NCAA scoring record in the heptathlon to go with his decathlon points record from 2022. He's an All-American in both indoor and outdoor track and field. His 2023 heptathlon score, by the way, the second best in the history of the world. We have not heard the last of him.
Former President Jimmy Carter turned 99 years old in 2023, one of the biggest Braves fans you honestly will ever see. In fact, this summer, a family member told us what brings the former president so much joy, watching the Braves. A few months later, his wife of 77 years, Rosalind, would pass. We remember seeing both President Carter and Mrs. Carter at Braves games throughout the 90s and beyond. We wish all the best for the former president and his family in Plains. Coming up, this year marks a new chapter in the storied history of Georgia Tech basketball. We're going to go one-on-one -on -one with Coach Damon Stoudemire when the Atlanta Sports Awards continues right after this. Welcome back, everybody. It's a brand new era for Georgia Tech men's basketball. Former NBA star Damon Stoudemire is now the new head coach. And already this season, the Jackets knocked off two top 25 teams in Mississippi State and Duke. So let's get to know more about the brand new Jacket and how his style hopes to bring Tech basketball all the way back. Our coaching spotlight shines on Georgia Tech's Damon Stoudemire. Coaching Spotlight, sponsored by Home Depot. It's a great job. Been coming to the city of Atlanta for a long time. Always rode on the freeway and seen the signs to take. Um, been over here, but you know, never imagined coaching here. <laughs> Knowing the history of the program, great players that come through here. It's an honor to be honest with you. Great city, um, great institution, and a great conference. Obviously, with the way college basketball works now, you have to get people from all over, but. Does the Atlanta talent part of it and the Georgia Tech tradition, is that a big draw to you as well? I mean, there's a lot of talent here, and it's not always the known talent. It's some of the lesser known talent as well. So that's definitely, you know, something that's added advantage, you know, for us being here. But at the same time, we got to bring that tradition back. We got to make, make guys want to feel Tech. I mean, because the thing about it is, it's just like with anywhere, you know, everybody don't want to stay home. You got to give them a reason to. How do you want Georgia Tech basketball to look and to play on the floor? Cliche is just to say you want a fast style of play. We'll, we'll do that. It doesn't matter if you play fast, if you play slow. The pillars of your program will be based on toughness, being able to take care of the ball, and being able to think, rebound. It's that simple. You know, I always say this: basketball and football correlate a lot. You talk about football and football; they talk about winning the trenches. Basketball is no different. If you out-rebound your opponent and don't turn the ball over, whether you're the best team or the worst team, you have a chance to win. And that's what I want to do every single game. Yes, we will, we will play fast. We will, we will do different things. But the basis of my, of my program is going to be built on, the, on those things. So far in the practices that you've held, the team you have right now, what excites you the most right now? And on the flip side, what do you think you guys have to get better at? Uh, the thing that excites me is I, I, I think we have a team that can, that can score the ball. And the one thing I've harped on, on with this squad is, you know, we need everybody. You got you to gotta share, I call it sharing the sugar. You got to share that, share that pill, share that ball. You got to wear who I am every day. And that got, that, that got to do with toughness, playing hard, competing. You got to do that every single day, and it got to be at a high level. It got to be at a level five every single day. It can't be below that. You got to be every single day. You got to know how to compete, man. Like if you can't compete, like with nobody looking, you ain't just going to turn it on when you play North Carolina, you play Duke, you play Florida State, you play Virginia, you play all these good teams in the ACC. It's not just going to happen overnight. You got to do it every single day. You got to become a creature of habit. You got to pay attention to detail because those are the things that's going to get us over the hump to be a good team. Do you think the fact that you were such a successful player, both in college and the pros, does that help you, A, in recruiting, and B, once you get the players in? I don't talk about it with them. I think, like, the biggest thing is it's a gift and a curse. You got to give former athletes that are good at it credit for us being able to articulate what they used to do on the floor to get other guys to do it. That's not always the easy part. You got to show them. You only know what you know. And that's the biggest thing that I love about this is to teach it. We play hard, and they see what I'm trying to do. They see what it looks like. You ask me what's my style, isn't it? Like, everybody could tell. Like, I want everybody to be able to say, I know what he's trying to do. I see it.
back to our top sports moments of 2023. Speaking of Georgia Tech, a former Yellow Jacket captivated all of America and a lot more around the world with a run to the quarterfinals of Wimbledon. Chris Eubanks beat four players, two of them seated in the top 12, on his way to the final eight of one of the greatest tournaments in the entire world. The Westlake High School grad was playing in his first ever Wimbledon main draw, making his performance even more stunning. He won his first ATP title right before Wimbledon and carried that hot streak right into the All England Club. He's currently ranked in the top 35 and we cannot wait to see him back out there in 2024. And 2024 will also bring a brand new wrinkle to the college football playoff with an expanded field from four teams to 12. For the past several years, the face of the playoff has been Bill Hancock, the event's executive director. He is retiring this year after an amazing career that includes the old Big 8 Conference, a director of the Final Four, and a role with the U.S. Olympic Committee. During a recent trip to Atlanta, he sat down with me to talk all about his career, the beginnings of the CFP, and where it goes in the future. Oh man, I've had a wonderful career. Uh, I've spent 16 years as a director of the Men's Final Four before I came over to football 19 seasons ago. So I'm just the luckiest person I know. I uh, got to work for the best event in college basketball and now the best event in college football. My primary memories are the people, the people you meet along the way, stadium managers, coaches, uh, athletes. Uh, that's the memories that I'm going to take with me into retirement. I'm going to cherish. College football playoff gets started in 2012. You're named executive director. Take me back to that moment when that was happening. <laughs> I should have been scared, but I didn't know enough to be scared. <laughs> you, you just put one foot in front of the other and, and do what needs to be done. I was the only employee. And so our, our, the conference commissioner said to me, build a staff, uh, get a selection committee, get sites, make it happen. We're here with you, but uh, make it happen. So nobody will ever have an opportunity as awesome as the one that I had and should have been scared of back then. But one of the things we did, though, was to bring in the Peach Bowl and to, to give ourselves a footing here in Atlanta, which has been great. Um, it, it was just an awesome opportunity. And right off the bat, we were successful. Sports Business Journal named us the best event of the year uh, right off the bat. And so we had a great start. We are going to 12 teams in the college football playoff. What was around that conversation when it started? It, it came down to one word, participation. More participation by more players, uh, more schools, more fans, mm -hmm. and more people with a chance to win the national championship. Not that there's anything wrong with the four-team event we have. It's worked, it's worked successfully. It's been terrific. Um, we have the highest uh, television viewership of anything other than the Super Bowl. So it's been very successful. But it was, it was time to look forward. Uh, we kept New Year's Day. New Year's Day is college football day. And we love that. We love the, the, the feeling, the pageantry, the tradition of New Year's Day, so we're going to stay with that. So first round, third Saturday in December, quarterfinals uh, New Year's Day and New Year's Eve, semifinals uh, on a weeknights, uh, a, week, a week later, and then champ game coming up on what will be here when we're in Atlanta will be Martin Luther King Day. I'm glad that you brought up Atlanta because Atlanta has been such a staple in college football. There have been so many games played here, important games, and the college football playoff will return here. It's the only repeat host city for a national championship. Talk about the decision that goes in behind Atlanta being a repeat host and why this city is so important to do that. Well, Atlanta has all the ingredients for a successful event. Great airport, great hotels, awesome stadium, and a community that knows how to host events. It starts with a host committee. Yeah. They branch out and recruit lots of volunteers and others in the community to help put the event on. Uh, this city has everything. And so it was not a hard decision to come back. I know that you've had so many memories when it comes to semifinal games and the championship game, but is there one in particular that you're going to remember the most? I think my primary memory probably has to be the Vince Young game in the Rose Bowl against Texas. Uh, it's, for many of us, it's the greatest college football game ever played because of the ups and downs and then, and then the way Texas won the game right at the end. Uh, it'll be hard to top that one.
Still to come, it was a fun season for the Atlanta Braves. Every single night, it seemed like a new record was broken, didn't it? We'll go to Truist Park to reminisce with manager Brian Snicker and second baseman Ozzy Albies. That and so much more when the Atlanta Sports Awards returns. Welcome back, everybody. They are some of the most powerful people in all of Atlanta sports. They are involved in key aspects of the Falcons, Braves, Hawks, and Dream. They've also all made history in their own way. We talked with all four of them in separate one-on-one -on -one interviews. Derek Schiller, president of the Braves. Steve Coonan, CEO of the Hawks. Morgan Shaw Parker, president of the Atlanta Dream. And Tim Zulowski, president of AMB Sports and Entertainment. Some really great conversations we had, and we learned a lot about sports in Atlanta. Sports Business Spotlight, sponsored by Georgia Power. If we could win the World Series every single year, I think that would be my goal. It is the goal of the franchise. It is the goal of our organization. Um, but beyond that, it's, it's really to, to treat people really well and to try to find a way to give them a bit of a respite from their everyday lives. You know, this is discretionary spending for somebody. They don't have to come to a Braves game. They don't have to follow us as a fan. We want them to do it, and we want to try to provide a, you know, a, a great outlet for them. We compete with every restaurant, movie, your sofa. And so, it, it, world has changed. It's not come here, drink a lukewarm beer and a mediocre hot dog. It's come here, have some of the best food in the city, um, meet your friends pre-game before you go out for the night or come here with your family and have, or co-workers and have a blast. There's nothing else here for girls and women and families in an affordable way that creates that kind of energy where you can get that close to your heroes and your mentors. And I'll tell you what, that atmosphere in Gateway Arena is a party every single night. You have to listen. So that's why we have the food and beverage pricing the way we do. Um, so that it is not an inhibitor, it's part of the experience. That's why the fan amenities that are offered in the stadium are continuing to evolve based off of listening to the customer after every single event. We do surveys, over 3,000 responses, and then we operationalize those every single week in order to continue to do the simple task of listening and responding to your customer. How do you constantly find new ways to be better in this franchise? Sports are a great uniter, and the opportunities continue to unfold and you know look what we're doing here tonight we're honoring sports we're talking to the people who run the sports teams in Atlanta who wear Atlanta on their chest and the opportunities continue to unfold to help lift people to do unique things um, to have fun and so in a world that unfortunately becomes more and more fractured we think we can be the glue and also one of the things that creates great pride in the city. And we take that as a serious responsibility. You know, one of the first things that we did is really, um, after we invested in the athletes and really looked at facilities and athlete pay and how do we how do we take care of the athletes first, we looked at, you know, how do we engage our fans and how do we make sure that our athletes are present? How do we build our organization through partnerships that are based around community? How do we get these young girls in front of our athletes and create those opportunities? And our partners have come out of the woodwork to build that together with us. There was a lot of skepticism about baseball and the growth of the sport, but this was clear in a way a year where baseball has grown. It has a lot of fan attendance. It's the most since 2018. This is an unbelievable time to be a baseball fan. Why? Some of it's the rule changes that have happened here recently. You know, the shorter games, the no shift, bigger bases, there's more offense, more scoring, all those different things. We're a sport that doesn't have a clock. It's very much of a social environment. And so when you come here with family and friends, it is, it is a really good social outing that I think more and more people have realized that's really important to them and I'm glad they have. If you want, really in most lines of business, if you want to know and you engage your potential customer, they are more than happy to give you their feedback. You know, we do 50 plus major events, 150 private events a year, a couple million people going through these doors. Whether we want to do in-person intercepts, uh, long-form, short-form surveys, phone calls, our fans, our partners, whether it be a, a corporate partner, a suite owner, or the season ticket member, are more than happy to tell us their journey, what they really enjoy, and areas of opportunity for us to make their experience even better. 
tell me about Hawks Ventures. Hawks Ventures was designed to fill a gap and the gap is that women entrepreneurs and minority entrepreneurs only garner 2% of all investment. So part of the, what we want to do for this community is to create opportunities. So we're making resources available for companies starting out and we're offering more than just money but advice and counsel and using our senior leadership to help these companies you know, take off and um, it's been incredibly fulfilling. How do you come up with ideas like that? Again, they just kind of unveiled themselves. This was a Tony Ressler, our, our principal owner's idea because he wanted, we know economic empowerment is needed in this city. We have a lot of economic disparity and you know, they say Buckhead and Bankhead Highway, you know, are two key parts of Atlanta but very different economically. And if we can help people, you know, achieve their dreams and their goals, and then they bring people along with them, we make this a better place. There is a lack of women in leadership positions in sports. You are one of them. How do you create those opportunities for women and help guide them in that way? You create those opportunities by starting at the very bottom. And it's not just creating and inviting women and people of color into internship positions. It's really looking at that pipeline in how to train women, how to train people of color to be in those spaces. Atlanta is one of the most diverse cities in the entire world, sitting in the heart of the civil rights, um, or I should say ongoing civil rights movement. You know, we've got to take that very seriously. And so I think that in order to see more women in leadership, you've got to intentionally create the pipeline at every single level. Let's talk about the fan engagement because fans have just been flocking to the ballpark for the Braves. They have been a lot, but this year in particular felt different. What went behind how many people were able to actually come to this ballpark? Two years in a row now, we've drawn over 3 million people. When you have just about 40,000 seats, that's hard to do. You do the math, that's about 95% of every seat is occupied on average every game. So it's a lot. We drew more than last year and, you know, obviously the team on the field leads the way with that. But I also think it's about the broader experience, you know, going to the battery uh, before or after games is part of your experience of taking in a baseball game, taking in a Braves game. And, you know, people have come to now make it part of the fabric of their summers. They come here far and away, you know, whether they're here in Atlanta and they're driving just down the street or they're coming from, you know, far out places throughout the United States. Mercedes-Benz Stadium never sleeps. Literally. Last year, there was 15 days in 2022 that we did not cook food. So 350 days of the year, our kitchens were running. And so when it comes to um, you know, the continuous opportunity to get feedback from fans, we have an amazing foundation from the desire of the owner to reinvest into this community, into this venue, and into the teams. We have an amazing foundation. into We have a city that every year more and more people move to than leave. We, there's an old adage that, that Arthur had put forth, which is no finish line. And that's how we run Mercedes-Benz Stadium, no finish line. So that we can be in consideration when those promoters are deciding where they want to put their event, whether it be a college football championship, which we're going to host in 25, or it might be an, a concert series or a festival or whatever it may be, those promoters have choice. For the, the, the people taking that risk, whether it be us or the promoter, that, that they can be financially uh, achieve their goals because of what Atlanta, AMBSE, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, and Georgia ultimately have to offer them. And why are you glad that you work here in Atlanta? Uh, I love Atlanta, first of all. I think, you know, we've got four seasons. Um, doesn't snow a whole lot. I come from a place in Colorado where it snowed a, a lot during the winter, but I still like the four seasons of Atlanta. Um, I think it's a great mix of people. My friendships are for, with people that are from all across the country that have somehow found their way here. And that is really what Atlanta, I think, is all about. Southern hospitality is pervasive throughout our city. And sure, it's, you know, it's got a lot of traffic. Well, that's because everybody wants to live here. And as a native Atlanta, to watch how it's exploded, and, but I think the culture continues to grow. And the best part of our city is the diversity. It's we get to learn about different people, different cultures and experience that and help grow us and help infuse people who move here from other parts of the country with how great the South is. 
For the Atlanta Sports Council's outstanding team of 2023, it's honestly so hard to ignore what the Atlanta Braves did. Individual records, team records, a regular season to remember, just as an example, 307 home runs, which ties the major league record for a whole season. The highest number of players to hit 30 home runs in a season. Oh, and don't forget, a season attendance record at Truist Park. So many things to be thankful for. Reggie Chapman talked with manager Brian Snicker and second baseman Ozzie Albies about a regular season to remember for the team and its individual players. Outstanding team, sponsored by Truist. An incredible season it has been for you guys. Over 100 wins, all sorts of records broken. We're going to get into all that in a second, but um, as someone that's been around the game and has been around this team for a long time, I want to ask you, did you know or when was the point did you realize that this season was going to be a little bit different? What we've done as a team as far as the wins and everything, you just you don't expect that and you don't afford yourself the luxury of looking ahead and expecting things like that or you drive yourself crazy. So I just get, you know what, and I'll probably sit back in the, in the off season and sit in my chair and sit there watching stuff and then I'll start reflecting on the year and how special it's been. Years down the line when your career ends, you'll be like, what was maybe the most special thing about this regular season in 2023? To me, it's all the histories that, that has been being, being made this year and also the wins. You know, you, for, you, for a team, for a club to win over 100 games every year, it's, I mean, it's, it's really special. So to me, it's when you're back sitting a couple of years from now, you always got to remember about these great moments and being around your teammates and having fun. A lot of records broken this year. I want to go through a couple of them. Um, we'll start with Spencer Strider. Breaks the single season strikeout record. He's been unbelievable in his two years. What have you kind of seen that makes him so special? And is it obviously going up against him in spring training? What's it like to be able to try and hit against him? To me, it's his workout routine and his daily routine he does inside and out here. I see him do the same thing and having the same success every single day. And to me, it's if your routine is working and that's the key to your success, don't change it. Is there a similar thing with Matt Olson? I mean, he's been unbelievable this year as well. It seems like he made that jump from year one to year two, and he had a great year last year. Breaks the home run record for the Braves. Same thing, his work ethic. You know, I see him working in the cage. He stays on his routine. And I know he worked really hard in the offseason, made some offensive adjustments. I mean, it's just one of those things that just, you know, and the thing of beauty about Matt is he comes and he plays every day. He expects to play every day. He, there's no highs and lows with him. He's just uh, what I call him the boring pro. Matt put together what could have been really an MVP type season yeah. if he wasn't on the team with Ronald Acuna Jr. I mean, a 40 and 70 season uh, for people that maybe don't even understand how insane that is. Can you help put that in perspective? Now, and I always talk about you better not leave your seat and go get a drink or go to the bathroom when Ronald's on the field because he may do something you've never seen before, whether it's offensively, defensively, running the bases, the whole thing. Um, and it, it, it's it's just amazing, you know, what, what this kid has accomplished. At the beginning of the season, you said that he's going to be better this year than he was yes. back in 2018. I think he's going to have a he's going to have a big year this year. Do you remember <laughs> saying that? And of course, I mean, of course. What was, how did you know? Last year, he had this injury year where he was playing, but he still was in, back in his mind thinking about, you know, his injury. And this year, the way he told me, hey, I feel 100 percent. I'm going to go off. I was like. Hey, he's gonna have an incredible year. I remember saying it early this year, this year that he's gonna go off, and I think he went more than off this year. So that's crazy. We talked about the past this last season. Looking forward to the future. A lot of these guys are locked up for a long time. Yeah. Um, how nice is that to be able to have, knowing that this core is going to be together for a long time. They're great individuals, and um, I think that lends the fact that why you feel good about tying them up and, and having them under contract for a long time because you know that what they're going to do. You know they're not going to change as a person, as an athlete. They're going to be driven to excel. They're going to be driven to win. And I think you, you have confidence in giving those guys contracts like that because you know that these guys are going to continue to fight and work to get better. It should be fun for a lot, a lot of years. Coming up, it is time for the Atlanta Sports Council's highest honor, the Lifetime Achievement Award. We talk with the man who knows the NFL and the Falcons inside and out. Stay with us. Hello and welcome back to the Atlanta Sports Awards. Each year, the Atlanta Sports Council's highest honor is the Lifetime Achievement Award. Past winners include Hank Aaron, Arthur Blank, Ted Turner, and Billy Payne. This year, it's Rich McKay, the CEO of AMV Sports and Entertainment and the CEO of the Atlanta Falcons, has had an incredible run before and during his time in Atlanta. Here's more on the Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Rich McKay. 
Lifetime Achievement Award, sponsored by Coca-Cola. What I have been so blessed to have found in Atlanta is a big town that acts like a small town and gave us a, a chance to do some really special things, whether it's the stadium, whether it's the events, whether it's the football team, and I have enjoyed it immensely. Rich McKay, a life in football. When you have a boss like Arthur Blank, he's going to drive you every day to keep trying to get better, and uh, that has definitely helped. Rich McKay is one of the power players in Atlanta sports. Officially, he's the CEO of AMB Sports and Entertainment, the umbrella organization of the Falcons, United, and Mercedes-Benz Stadium. He's also the Falcons CEO and one of the most powerful people in the NFL. His unofficial title is Arthur Blank's right-hand man, and he came to Atlanta in 2004 as Falcons general manager, leaving the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who just won a Super Bowl. Arthur was a new owner. He'd been in the league two years. I was in a situation where I was not comfortable with um, the direction the football team was going to go and wanted to go. Uh, it wasn't how we had set the team up, and I understood that a direction was going to be driven by the coach, and I was okay with that. Uh, I needed to get out of the way, and so because we were coming off the Super Bowl, I had some opportunities to go different places, and to me it was all about where's mama going to be comfortable with the boys, raising the boys, what's, what's going to be a good city for that it's not going to be one where the temperature is real cold and, uh, and ownership. And so to me, Atlanta was a perfect place. In 2011, Blank named him the team's president and CEO. That same year, longtime NFL writer Peter King slotted him as number 10 on the list of 100 most influential people in the NFL. His influence has grown, as has his role. I didn't sign up for this originally. You know, I signed up to be a general manager and, and run a football team. Um, the Michael Vick year happened, uh, you know, right in front of us, and the whole thing was just a crazy six months or eight months. We reshuffled and redirected. Um, the boss had made a promise to me when I came in that I wouldn't have to do another stadium deal. Don't worry, the one you did in Tampa, that's it. You don't have to do another one. And then reverse course and said, Let, you know, I want to do one. Um, it, it took a long time to do, but very worthwhile. And for me, a great experience. I enjoyed it. The one thing about Atlanta is that everybody works around a round table. Doesn't mean we always agree, doesn't mean we go at the same pace, but it was always in a very cordial and productive manner. That's the mayor, that's the governor, different governors, different mayors. And so for me, it's a great process. Falcons, United, the Benz, and big events. McKay has had his hands in all of it. I like the fact that we touch everything. I mean, there's nothing, you know, we're in the golf business. We're in the football business, we're in the soccer business, we're in the stadium business. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a cool thing to be involved in and I enjoy it. We're a much bigger organization. I like that, I like the people side of it. I'm not sure I love the politics side of it, but it's just part of what we do, um, but that's okay. The golf business he refers to is the new tech-infused golf league founded by Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy. McKay is quick to give credit to Arthur Blank for this and all of the other ventures within the company. I don't think he'll ever go to bed at night and not think about the next venture. That's just kind of who he is. I think the, the cool thing about Arthur that he deserves just incredible amount of credit for is he stepped away from Home Depot. Okay, that's a not a victory lap. It's more than a victory lap, right? They're co-founders of just an incredible enterprise. Um, he steps into the Falcons. They're not popular. Things aren't going well. He gives a $10 ticket to try to sell the building out. The next thing you know, the building sold out ever since he's owned it. It's a pleasure to be around him. Uh, you just got to realize that, you know, you got to keep your phone on. You got to realize that at night you're liable to get that call. And when you do, it might not be pretty. It's going to be very direct. It's going to be, we need to do this. And uh, you're going to wake up in the morning and get it done. One of the things they got done is Mercedes-Benz Stadium, which opened in August of 2017. It's since hosted a Super Bowl, college football playoff national championship, and countless other big events. I mean, Georgia Dome had a history, and it was great. Uh, we felt like the new venue was needed in order to go to the next level, right? Like, you know, whether it's going to be Super Bowls, whether it's going to be big events, whether it's going to be the Falcons, it's just we felt like it was the next thing needed. I don't think we realized what it could be. We do feel like the building has really held up its end on what we said it could be, and it's got a long ways to go, and it can get better. I mean, when we thought about MLS and the fact of starting the franchise, there were some of us that had doubts on, okay, how many people are we gonna put in here? 
That's why we put the curtains up. That's why we said, okay, can we really make, and oh my, did Atlanta deliver uh, on backing up that franchise? So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a really cool venue and it's been very impactful. Also impactful is his role on the very powerful NFL competition committee. They make the rules, some of which may be controversial, that govern the games we watch. You get yelled at a lot. Uh, it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not a popularity contest, but I think we've done good things for the game. I like where the game is. I like the health and safety of the game. I think that 10 years ago, I think there were a bunch of people that questioned, you know, where will football be in 10 years? Can, how can you deal with the health and safety challenges you've got? I think we've done a really good job of dealing with those. Um, we have more work to do, but we're, we're a way better game today from a health and safety standpoint than we've been. And competitively, it's an, it's an excellent shape. Rich McKay, a football lifer, a lifetime of achievement, and it's not done yet. No, I'm not doing something else. The boss may decide for me not to, but I will not. I, I like sports. I like Atlanta. This is, will be our home forever. Falcons owner Arthur Blank wrote a letter congratulating McKay, writing in part, I want to congratulate you and honor your passion, relentless work, and love of the sports industry. Your impact here in Atlanta will be felt for decades to come. There is truly no one quite like you. He continued by saying, there is no denying your talent in the sports business, but what makes you exceptional is your kind heart, joyful spirit, and dedication to making people and places better than you find them. He ends the letter with one final congratulations. Rich, Thank you for your loyalty to our organization, the community you serve, and to those around you. It's my honor to recognize you tonight, brother. Congratulations again. We continue with our running list of the top sports moments in Atlanta for 2023. And who could forget the former Georgia Bulldog going across the pond to win his very first major. Brian Harmon, he dominated at Royal Liverpool in July, winning the British Open by six strokes. Harmon was a top junior player, made a PGA Tour cut at the age of 17, and was the youngest player to ever represent the U.S. in the Walker Cup. But his pro career, it's been pretty inconsistent until, of course, the Open. It was his first win since 2017, and it was one we will all always remember. It was also a year of excellence for our Team 1-1 high school athletes, team championships, and individual titles. It all came together for so many of our young stars. Here's a recap. Team 1-1 excellence. What a year for our current and former Team 1-1 stars. A national champion, Flage Johnson from Sprayberry High School, lived her best life during March Madness as she and the LSU Tigers won the national championship. Weeks later, former Kel Longhorn Scoot Henderson, realizing his dreams of playing in the league, the third overall pick by the NBA's Portland Trailblazers. Naturally, uh, Portland is now your new home. But it when is. you think about home um, back in Marietta, um, maybe what was the biggest thing from from your hometown that kind of grew you the person that you are today? Um, I think how everything is so tight, so tight there. You know, everybody know everybody in that in that city a little bit. So I think just that family aspect again, just that close knit aspect of me. You know, going back, Jim to the house and. Um, seeing the same people every other day, you know, going to school, going back home. So it's just, just the whole aspect of just tight knit and, and closeness is, is, I know it's going to be great. And we just wrapped up a big week of high school football state championships at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Great atmosphere and some great games. Championships for Cedar Grove and Milton. Cedar Grove's fifth title in eight years. And Milton wins its second in four seasons. A wild game against the Walton Raiders. Eagles, though, soar just a bit higher to take the Class 7A crown. And don't forget early signing day less than a week away. Buford's Dylan Raiola and K.J. Bolden, plus Parkview's Mike Matthews, ranked among the top prospects in the country. High school sports never stronger in the A than they are right now. And more to come in 2024. Viewers from around the country watched the remarkable efforts to save Bills player DeMar Hamlin when he suffered cardiac arrest during a Monday night football game. Since then, there has been an increased effort to educate the public on responding to cardiac episodes, including right here in Atlanta. We are honoring a group of doctors who are doing just that when the Atlanta Sports Awards continues. 
Each year, the Atlanta Sports Council and the Atlanta Sports Awards recognize unsung heroes who make a difference in sports behind the scenes. This year, we honor a group of Emory physicians who partner with athletes to help respond to cardiac events. The program is called CARES, and we talked with one of its directors. Unsung Hero, sponsored by the Arthur M. Blank Family Foundation. Well, the Cardiac Arrest Registry to Enhance Survival, better known as CARES, is a program that is a measurement tool. And so basically, we are helping communities evaluate or measure their resuscitative efforts when it comes to out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. And so our primary customers are EMS agencies, and we are collecting their out-of-hospital cardiac arrest information so that they can measure what they're doing with their resuscitative efforts locally. Unfortunately, over 350,000 people every year suffer from out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, and unfortunately, 9 out of 10 of those people do not survive. And so being able to know information like that and being able to have a program like CARES that captures your out-of-hospital cardiac arrest information for your community locally and being able to measure what your resuscitative efforts are is very important. Any program that improves response to cardiac events is welcome and becomes crucial as we watch athletes at all levels, from pro to high school, get bigger, faster, and stronger. But a cardiac event can strike at any time, at any age. We've seen it happen with the Buffalo Bills' DeMar Hamlin and Bronny James, the son of LeBron James. Dr. Jonathan Kim is the Director of Sports Cardiology at Emory University. I think it's really important to acknowledge DeMar Hamlin himself. Yeah. Him and his foundation, Chasing M's, they have really, he has made this a point of emphasis. And the emergency action plan, access to AEDs, that's nothing new in the field of cardiology, sports medicine, emergency medicine. We've been preaching that message for as long as I've been in medicine, that that's a critical part of this. But there's a reason why there's such a national spotlight on this. And that's because DeMar has made this one of his passions. And again, yes, there has been an improvement and an important emphasis. And my hope is, is that we don't lose this momentum where we're at right now that it continues um, into 2024 and we don't just forget about what happened on January 2nd 2023 or with Bronny James his event as well and just kind of like move about our day until the next uh, event and these events will still occur but we need to focus in on that prevention side once an event occurs almost the um, the response to these events that's hopefully where the focus continues to stay on. Ultimately, it boils down to awareness and education in each community. Making sure that your child, making sure that you know where the AEDs are placed in your school, the defibrillators are placed in your schools, um, and just knowing, you know, what's the difference between someone being passed out, or someone being pulseless, or someone being in out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and what needs to happen immediately. In a program like CARES, measuring that information, providing it back to communities, providing it to the EMS providers is important. All right, everybody, let's wrap up our look at the top sports moments in our area for 2023, and we end with an international flavor. This past year, Atlanta hosted both the Adidas ATL Games, a track and field spectacular inside Centennial Olympic Park, and an English Premier League exhibition at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The ATL Games, they featured sprints on an elevated track in the park, and even a pole vault competition, which was, of course, quite the spectacle at night right there in downtown Atlanta. On the pitch, new Castle and Chelsea played to a 1-1 draw at the Benz. Both events are another sign that Atlanta can host absolutely any event. And soccer fans, don't you forget, there's a lot more to come, including Copa America matches in 2024 and, of course, a FIFA World Cup match in 2026. What an unbelievable year, everybody, and we can't wait to do it again in 2024. As we leave you, let's take one final look at some of those big moments in Atlanta sports in 2023 on behalf of the Atlanta Sports Council. Thank you, fans, for such a great year. I'm Maria Martin. We'll see you in 2024.